Greetings everyone! Thanks for stopping by again. Today, we've got another video. We're discussing food preparations for people with dietary restrictions. And we have Eva here to taste test a gluten-free meal option that's freeze-dried and good for 20 plus years. In this case, it's by Backpackers Pantry. This flavor is Louisiana red beans and rice. We're gonna put it together, Eva's gonna try it, and then we're gonna talk about other things while we let it sit. <laughs> now it says to seal it for 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, Eva, tell us a bit about the fun you have with food. Um, so I'm allergic to both uh, wheat and eggs and actually chicken as well. So this food right here is just red beans and rice, so it's actually something I can eat. And beans are a good source of protein, so it's good for gluten-free people to eat. Now what sort of uh, issues do you have when you go out to eat or shopping, just like that? Do you have a lot of trouble finding food that fits you? I don't have that much trouble finding food to, to fit me because I can eat potatoes and corn and stuff. Okay. So when you think about putting together a one-year food supply, or even longer, what sort of foods are going to be good suit for you? What would, what would be the things you would definitely say, I definitely want a lot of these, and other things you're like, oh, none of that? So I guess it depends on what you're talking about. I, uh, for dry storage, probably a lot of beans and rice. Um, if I could do other things, I know potatoes can really store decently for a while. Mm -hmm. Not forever. Not as long as beans and rice, obviously. And I like having meat or some sort of meat around. I like frozen meat if that's possible. We have a great option to solve your meat problems. Freeze-dried meat, believe it or not, is actually really good. We're gonna organize a giant taste test of some freeze-dried meat and cook it up and everyone can try it. And in this case, it'll be beef. We'll make beef tacos, so we say, or hamburgers. Well, obviously bunless hamburgers mm. and things <laughs> for, to combine with her. Now, the interesting thing you gotta watch out for is like when you're forming groups, you know, I stockpiled a lot of food already and partially a good chunk of my food actually has gluten because I can deal with my own grown flour. When I grind my own wheat and stuff like that and that the industry doesn't get a hold of it, it doesn't bug me nearly as bad. Now she can't have any of it. So that drastically alters, you know, like if we're getting together doing stuff during an emergency, I can't just say, here, have some bread. She'll be like, what? You're gonna kill me. We can't do that. So when I was realizing, oh, so I'm you know, adding a person to my group here, well, they have a dietary restriction. And this was something new to me. I was like, well, I need to start rethinking how I'm doing this, altering my plans. And as you get together and form with people, you're gonna have to realize that certain foods have a uh, range that are higher crossover. There's a, like beans and rice. I've found lots and lots of people can eat those. The one I keep hitting into major problem territory deals with eggs and deals with wheat. Those are the two I've seen a lot of troubles with. Now obviously certain spices can sometimes just tear you up on digestion. I have my own issues with that with certain spices nowadays just being murder, so you gotta be careful of that. Can you eat this one? Because I know this one has, um, this one has New Mexico chili pepper in it. See, I'm on no. It depends on how strong it is. Like if they, like I'm actually allergic to chili peppers. Can you believe it? Like all classes of chili peppers. And it just tears me up on the inside. And, if it gets real bad, it's like double dose of Benadryl. If it's really, really bad, it's a trip to the hospital. So I really gotta watch out for chilies. Now, in terms of spicing, I've done more traditional savory style spicings. It's like that. Now that's the bad thing, is that we stockpile a large bean pile of red beans and rice, or corn, potatoes and all this stuff. We need spices to go with it. If we're just boiling it up and we barely even got salt, it's gonna be miserable. Just miserable. Yeah, we'd survive though. We would survive. That's but I don't know. That's the important if, part. It'd be like dinner's ready. <laughs> <laughs> 
Can I? Can you? Can we? Can I, can I get some uh, mealworms added to that? <laughs> but the the great thing is that spices are very easy to stockpile because they last for so long. They do. So you can, if you're thinking about it, stockpile a lot of that type of stuff. Which includes a lot of in my plans include a lot of spices, a lot of various options. Um, I've been learning a lot of how to make sauces because I really like stir fry, and freeze dried vegetables actually stir fry really well. Mm -hmm. We will. Mm hmm. We will go over those in a video and show how it works. Pretty amazing. And of course, you know, you got your rice, everything else you need. And then with a good sauce, good to go. But I have this really unusual freeze-dried meats I want to show people. And we'll give a link. Just don't buy it all because I want some of it too, dang it. <laughs> but they are uncooked freeze-dried meat. Absolutely amazing stuff. You cook them up, and then it tastes pretty much indistinguishable from the normal product. So like when your hamburger is cooked up, you're like, wow, that's a great hamburger. In fact, my wife thinks they're the best hamburger she's ever eaten. She's like, could you just buy me these all the time? <laughs> Which is sad, because I would love to be able to serve them all the time, because they're really tasty. They're just pricey. But well, we're going to go over how to use those sometime. We'll get together some more people of the group, and you can say hi to all of them. I'll try it. I want to try it. Mm hmm. Really impressive. Although the, it's just you think of yourself, freeze dried hamburger. How could that possibly be good, right? Sounds weird, right? Yeah, that doesn't sound very good. Because it comes in a can. <laughs> I'm skeptical. <laughs> exactly. Now it's funny is when you open it up, and stuff, you hear a nice hiss. There's a throwback to Steve from MRE Info, but. You get a good hiss from the can, open it up, pull out, and you see these um, pinkish looking patties and they feel like cardboard. So weird. <laughs> it's weird. It, it doesn't make any sense. But you put them in water that's about 110 degrees, that has some salt in it, let them sit for a while, push some, put up something on them to push them down, and they soak up everything and all the juices. And you're like, okay. Pull one out and they're a little fragile, whatever, but you get them on the grill, they cook up like a perfect hamburger, and they taste like a hamburger, and they are good. Very juicy and everything, they're wonderful. They make tacos just fine, you break it up into taco meat. Works great, really nice. What about corn, how do you preserve? If you wanna make tacos, you have to have a way of preserving corn. Mm-hmm. Well, for corn, what we do is we're gonna dry out, feed corn, and produce, and produce masa. We're gonna go over all of that in a more videos to show the entire process. In this case, this year I grew a lot of corn in my garden, and the corn is actually multicolored. So when we make the tacos, they're kind of gonna be like a bluish purple in color. It'll be pretty neat, but it's probably gonna taste great. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. How are we doing on our time? I don't know, we're just watching the time. Uh, okay, we're making it there. Seven minutes and 24 seconds left. Now it's funny as I've seen another review on this, and the other and the people really liked it. They really liked it. It looks good. It's got red beans, white rice, tomato, onion, potato parts, some salt, mashed chili pepper, uh, turkey sugar, cornstarch, garlic, cumin seed, oregano, and pan. I don't know if this is good for you, but yeah. sounds the only like one it's too warm. It, the chili pepper is going to be my it's issue. Cayenne. What's neat about this company, Backpackers Pantry, is they have a lot of gluten-free options. I was really impressed by that. The other thing, though, is for someone like Eva here, who has additional restrictions, she has to just carefully check in that. Yeah. But, there's still a really good pile of options. What's neat about these kind of meals, though, is they're preset, pre-seasoned. So, if you had to go out, you know, on a scavenging hunt after the great epoch has come to pass and we're all digging for everything we can, you could load these up in a backpack, Boil some water over a fire, which you've all seen how to make fire now. Get it set, your meal's all set and ready. The nice thing is, you're not gonna make a ton of the cooking scent. In fact, you could also add a lot of leaves to your fire to throw it off to make it, oh, there's weeds burning scent. Because most people aren't gonna use them for cooking. And people are gonna be like a little suspicious. You know, they could think it's a brush fire or something else. Another thing you could do is use a flameless heater to heat them up. Something like out of an MRE. There's these uh, nice little kits that are for heating up meals in a pot where they do the same technique as an MRE. And they would have no smell. Of course.
course, there's also other ways that you can make fires that produce very little smell and hide it effectively. We'll cover all of these in future videos. But these have a great purpose, because they're preset and ready, out you go. Obviously, you can see they're aiming for backpackers, but I tend to purpose them for a wider range. How long do these things last? 20 years. 20 years? Or more. It's pretty long. It is. Now, if you leave them in a car and let them sit all the time in the hot heat, they will degrade faster. So in your house, nice temperature controlled, 70 degrees, cool dark place, so to speak, will last a very long time. Mountain House has pushed theirs up saying they last 30 years. Very impressive. All right, we're back and we have a new person. This is Lee. And she's unfortunately stuck with me most of the time. And we also have the cat. Yeah, and our cat to join us. <laughs> we ended up going to the stove to boil out some water. It turned out the water that they had on the direction seemed a little too much at our altitude. It yeah. happens. You gotta kinda test these things, see how they go. But the finished product, I don't know if you can see that, looks pretty good. It also smells really good. Now it's time to taste test it. Everyone, grab a spoon and see what you think. Temperature hot. <laughs> hmm. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. And the rice and beans cooked up pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. There's some spice to it. So it is it there is a bit of a kick to it. But that's not bad at all. Mm. Mm -hmm. I like it. That's, yeah, that's good. good. That does have a bit of a kick. Very mild. I think it's pretty mild. It's, it's mild by my taste, but my taste... <laughs> I'm the one who eats like extra, extra hot chili, so nobody listen to me. <laughs> yeah. It's mild. No, for a lot of people, this would be a good tasty meal. Now, the actual calories in the whole packet were 600, and that's not bad. Now... Was that per serving or per... Two per serving? Uh, the calories per serving was 290. Okay. And what's good about that, though, is after a major event happens, we're all going to be very busy hauling stuff, moving stuff. 600 calories is going to be a basic, you know, snack. You're really going to be eating close to 3,000 calories a day. When we start to cover the, you know, one-year food supply and then scale that up to be multiple years, you know, like seven-year food supply, you need to plan for using about 3,000 calories a day because you're going to be busy. Oh, you're going to be busy. Especially if we're doing farming, getting land ready, building houses for people, uh, irrigation work, sewage work. I mean, everything's going to break down and we got to rebuild it. We're going to be, unfortunately, very busy. And since so much of the grid and the infrastructure is going to be down, like, we're not going to have any ability to get electricity except for what we make ourselves. We're not going to have any ability to get natural gas or oil, which means gasoline and diesel. A lot of this stuff's going to have to be done by hand until we reinvent steam power. It's gonna be a lot of work. Or we might end up generating you know, steam power that makes electric electricity that we have things we can bring in and use electric motors to do some work. You can't have any. But it's still gonna be a ton of work for everyone. Well, here's a quick video. Discusses red beans and rice from Backpackers Pantry. And it gets a thumbs up from me. What like do the girls it. think? Well, the girls like it too, so that's a good deal. So if you're looking at it, check it out. And remember, as you're putting stuff away, also if, don't put all your food storage in wheat. Too many people can have a problem. If you're expecting to be able to form a group and trade with people, wheat might be a really detriment. Thankfully, I don't have everything in wheat. I only have a small bit of wheat, which will be good. The other thing though is I do carry you know, eggs and chicken, but that's okay. A lot of that stuff doesn't have a huge crossover, and they're fairly less sensitive. Except for, you know, Eva here, she has a sensitivity to it. So we have to adjust that. And obviously as we help put together the one-year food supply for her, everything has to be adjusted. Once we get started on the one-year food supply, we'll cover it with her and show, here's a map, and here's what you do. Mm -hmm. It takes into account her dietary restrictions. Hope everyone got to learn something. Hope it was a little interesting. This is Reed. Out for now. And the girls say bye to me. <laughs> <laughs>
Right. <laughs>